One third of the people in the world have a vitamin B12 deficiency, and as there is no element in our body that is so crucial for the health of the brain, heart, and DNA, many of the symptoms we experience on a daily basis and attribute to aging can simply be due to a deficiency of this vitamin. Therefore, I will explain to you which people are at higher risk of suffering from this deficiency, what symptoms you should pay attention to, and I will give you guidelines to replenish it if you are lacking this vitamin. Today I share with you the symptoms of low vitamin B12 and how to replenish it. Vitamin B12, or cobalamin, is an essential vitamin for our nervous system because it helps produce the layer that protects and insulates all the connections between our neurons, the axons. All signals travel through these extensions that act like cables and which rely on this substance myelin as insulation so that transmission is faster. If there is not enough B12, the axons are left unprotected, like a stripped cable, and this generates damage that will lead to a series of neurological symptoms that we are going to see. And on the other hand, vitamin B 12 is fundamental for the health of our red blood cells, the messengers that carry oxygen from our lungs to the entire body. When this vitamin is lacking, the red blood cells that form are larger and misshapen. This scenario is called megaloblastic anemia, and these giant red blood cells will have a hard time moving through the labyrinth of our blood vessels and will break more easily which means they live shorter than a normal one. In fact, some of them get trapped in the bone marrow where they are born without ever leaving because they are unable to join our bloodstream due to their large size. All this will cause my tissues to receive less oxygen and a series of symptoms will appear that I am going to tell you about. Moreover, vitamin B12 participates in the synthesis of DNA in all our cells, something that is especially important during periods when we need rapid cell growth, such as pregnancy and child development. And not only that, but B12 helps to repair the DNA of our cells so its deficiency can increase the risk of certain types of cancer. Now, how do I know if I'm not getting enough? What are the symptoms of low B12? First, we have fatigue and weakness, which are going to be caused because we are going to have fewer red blood cells to transport oxygen to our tissues, resulting in less oxygen available. This is going to make me feel pale, tired, weak, and make daily tasks more difficult, and I might even experience shortness of breath if I do some type of effort. I'm also going to experience difficulty concentrating and a gradual loss of memory, and it will be essential not to ignore these symptoms, because although these cognitive changes are usually reversible with treatment, if the deficiency is left untreated for a long time, they can become permanent. In addition, I can have psychological changes, such as a lower mood than usual, and even experience a more severe picture, leading to depression. On the other hand, we have neurological problems. When my nervous system is affected by insufficient vitamin B12, I can experience symptoms such as tingling and loss of sensitivity in the hands and feet, with a sensation of pins and needles, loss of balance and tremors. And in addition, and this is something more characteristic of the lack of this vitamin, I can see my tongue swollen, red, and suffer ulcers or sores. Of course, none of these symptoms alone is sufficient to know for sure that we have low B12. So the only way I have to know if my B12 levels are decreased is through a test. And the issue here is that doctors are used to measuring this vitamin directly in the blood, which gives us an approximation, but it is by no means the most accurate way. And it is that I can have a B12 deficiency, and that in the analysis my levels are normal, or take time to appear low, and the accessible test that has the most sensitivity, especially in early deficiencies, is to measure methylmalonic acid in the blood or urine. This is because if there is a B12 deficiency, the levels of this compound in the blood and urine increase. Now, why does this B12 deficiency occur? There are several causes that can lead me to not have sufficient levels of B12. On one hand, we have a poor dietary intake, as with people who follow predominantly plant-based diets. On the other hand, there are malabsorption problems, when I provide enough B12, but my body is not able to use it. And this happens because once we ingest B12, it needs to be separated from the food in our stomach, which we do thanks to hydrochloric acid. So, if my stomach does not produce enough acid, I will end up having a B12 deficiency. Notably, a third of people over 60 find themselves in this situation, as over time, our stomach loses the ability to produce acid. And we also see it in those who have undergone stomach surgeries, or those who take drugs like omeprazole or ranitidine. And now that I have understood in which situations I should pay more attention to this vitamin, it is convenient for me to know. 
where do we get B12 from? All right, before I tell you who will need to supplement with this vitamin, we must understand that B12 is not of plant origin, nor is it of animal origin. Cobalamin is synthesized by bacteria from the soil, which must be rich enough in cobalt. So, while a person who consumes meat can obtain cobalamin by eating animals that feed on the ground, such as cows, pigs, or chickens, people who follow vegetarian or plant-based diets will not have it so easy. Moreover, eggs and dairy products have B12, but not enough. We know this because many people who follow ovo-lacto-vegetarian diets and do not supplement end up developing a deficiency once the B12 stores in their liver are depleted, that is, after three to five years. And as for the contribution in the omnivorous diet, if the meat source is not from free range, it is very likely that the animal has been supplemented with B12, because the overexploited soil of industrial livestock usually does not have any cobalt left for the synthesis of vitamin B12. Centuries ago, we obtained B12 in sufficient quantities. Everything we consumed had some soil on it. We drank from streams or puddles and ate food without disinfecting it. But now, we add chlorine to the water supply to eliminate all bacteria. Basically, the fair deal we've made with nature is that we no longer contract many diseases that came with food, and in return we get less vitamin B12. And the paradox here is that we are capable of synthesizing this vitamin, that is, the bacteria in our intestines can generate it. Only that these are mostly found in our colon, and unfortunately, B12 is absorbed in the section of the intestine that comes just before the ileum. In fact, gorillas seem to have learned this because they get all the B12 they need from their own feces. And although there are several plant foods that contain compounds similar to B12, they are not B12, but analogs. We have algae like spirulina and nori, which have something similar to cobalamin, but it definitely is not. And the issue is that in a blood test, these pseudovitamins can be detected as true B12, which could lead us to think that we are on the right track when we could actually be deficient. And finally, we have chlorella, a type of single-celled green freshwater algae that has been found to contain active vitamin B12, useful for humans in some preliminary studies, but of course we do not yet know enough about this algae to recommend foregoing supplementation for it. So, who should supplement with B12? The people who undoubtedly will need to do so are vegans and ovo-lacto-vegetarians, but also older adults. Entities such as the National Institutes of Health in the United States recommend that people over the age of 50, regardless of their diet, consume B12 in the form of supplements or fortified foods due to the decrease we see in their absorption over the years. Therefore, if you are over 50 and exhibit any of the symptoms I have mentioned, and you do not have access to a blood test, my evidence-based recommendation is that you incorporate this vitamin into your daily routine, and we have many options for supplementation. Among them, cyanocobalamin is the most commonly used form of vitamin B12 in supplements and fortified foods because it is the most stable and economical. Regarding the dosage, all predominantly plant-based diets, even those including eggs and dairy, should be fortified either with a daily dose of vitamin B12 of at least 10 micrograms, I recommend at least 50, or a weekly dose of at least 2,000 micrograms. This is because the higher the dose we ingest at one time, the harder it is for our body to absorb this vitamin. And if you are over 50 and do not follow a plant-based diet and do not have the possibility of getting a test to check your levels, especially if you have any of the symptoms we have seen, I recommend 50 mcg daily, with those over 65 possibly requiring 100 mcg. And now, for those over 50 who follow plant-based or ovo-lacto-vegetarian diets, it is advisable to take at least 100 mcg daily. And for vegetarians over 65, there are guidelines that recommend 1000 mcg, which seems reasonable due to the absorption difficulty we have mentioned at these ages, and in case of doubt, we can afford to take generous doses because vitamin B12 is water-soluble, which means it dissolves in water, so any excess that the body does not need is expelled through the urine. Then we have other less economical forms like methylcobalamin or adenosylcobalamin, the active forms, and hydroxocobalamin, all of them safe and as valid as cyanocobalamin. And thank you very much for staying with me until here. If you found this helpful, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so we can see each other, as always, next week.